Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen. So it's Friday. We do florals on Friday. Not always, but have fun on Fridays. Check this out. Super fun, loose florals in a vase. Oop, move that away. <laughs> step by step I go over this. We're playing with all kinds of techniques. Wet on wet, removing paint, adding paint, splattering paint. You know, just getting a feel for um, painting in something like this. This has a lot of energy and exuberance to it. I give you my, you know, my thought process as I draw the vase, so you can draw the vase, and then how I go about the rest of this. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. I really want you to explore when you're going to do loose florals, just to play with it, play with color. You know, I did the blues and purples. You could have done more, you know, hot tones, pinks and reds and oranges and yellows. I mean, it can be so many different ways just playing with this. Again, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, I'm using a nine by 12 block, but you don't have to use a block. Um, this is the Fabriano uh, um, white cold, 100% cotton cold pressed paper. I'm just gonna take a triangle here. You can use a ruler. And I'm just gonna mark up where I want like the table to kind of end this particular design. Kind of like here. Right, simple as that. You can put wherever you want. And then I'll do the vase kind of coming down like here, so. I don't need to have it necessarily straight. I'm just gonna get that, figure out where I'm gonna put the vase. Mm, away from the wall, maybe a little closer. Over here. And how wide you wanna make it. This just helps you do your cylinder. And then of course, you curve the cylinder. So it's like this. You know how to do cylinders and little circles. It's best if you can start to draw your own stuff. I've talked about this a thousand times because you're only going to grow as an artist and just kind of mimic that. But, you know, we're going to cover this with flowers. So you don't really have to worry about the top so much. And, of course, erase the line. You could keep the line because we're actually going to paint over some of that. I'm going to erase my line that I did in the beginning. And I'm going light, to lightly erase all of it, actually, so I don't really see it necessarily. So that's kind of like the only bones that you have to worry about in this whole picture. The rest of it, I don't know. Actually, I actually think that this is up too high. I'm gonna pull this down a little more. So I have more room up here for the flowers. So I'm gonna pull the vase down a little more. This is my thought process. And you can figure out what you wanna do. You can have it in the middle of the paper. Again, do my little cylinder scenario here. Huh? Maybe I'll see that. Maybe I won't. Depends on how see-through I want to make this vase. All right. So I might have had it this tall, but I might not keep it that way. I think I'm going to keep it a little shorter. Maybe around here. I don't know. I'll play around with that. I'm going to slow this video down if that helps you. So that's the vase. We're going to be doing some wet on wet, wet on dry, all that good stuff. Play with the colors that you, you know, that you want to play with. You have to do some blues and purples. You can do some yellows and reds. Um, it's all a matter of what you want to do. I always have paper towels, by the way, close by. If you don't see them in the picture, I'm always tapping them around somewhere. Um, I have ultramarine blue here. If you wonder what, what's on my palette here. Let me put some more paint. So ultramarine blue over here, burnt sienna next to it. But I'm not doing some blues. This is a cobalt down here. Uh, I tried a little lemon yellow in my tutorial with my Patreons. It's kind of fun to use this kind of lemon color. And we've got the typical bright rose over here, which I would mix to make purple, etc. So a couple of brushes we could use. A flat wash brush for the vase. You can just be going like this, strokes like this around it, maybe patchworky, grays and blues, whatever you want to do, even more colors. You can use, this is a 3 4 inch flat wash brush from Princeton. Um, you can just use a generic, I have this like generic craft flat wash brush I use a lot. It's one inch. Whatever you got. You don't even have to use flat wash brush. So, how can we start this? You can start off just putting in some color down, like by where the vase is, or getting this all wet up here and put some flowers. I'm going to start doing a couple of different things at once. Taking some ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. Make a gray, dipping into my 
water here. So the gray, the base could be more gray, more blue. You can play around with that. And I'm just going to use this brush. And I'm going to go down here a little bit and use the chisel in on this side. Clean off, grab some water, kind of play with this brush. See that? Nothing too extravagant. This could be the water line or not. Depends. Just gonna play with this. Gonna clean up some paint and kind of tap out. Like I'm lifting the paint off here. I don't know if I necessarily wanted it dark up there. I don't know. I'm playing around with it. I'm seeing. If I wanted the water line there, maybe I'd move the water line up. The rest of it shouldn't be so dark. I can add some color from the stems, etc. And I'm going to add a little more burnt sienna, a little bit more brown tones happening. And you can play with the table, right? Putting in color here. I'm just loosely doing this, as you can see. It will kind of, if it's glass, it's going to kind of show through a little bit on the back, right? You'll see some of that color kind of peeking through. And I just love, you can just make these little marks with the lovely flat wash brush. We're just going loosely here, having fun. Right? Kind of like a patchwork. Go up to the glass a little bit. Add some in here. See the table through the, the vase. Still want to keep some white in there. And that's our table. So we got this nice light neutrals kind of happening. We'll let that dry. We'll play with putting more color on top of it. So now just get a, a building of the picture here. Um, I don't know if I necessarily want to keep that line because I might want to put some color of balloons up here, but let me remove some of this a little bit so I'm not stuck with it. Okay, and I don't mind if there's like a cauliflower edge there. So I'm going to remove the colors that I just did, okay. and now we're going to play with just fun color. So I would suggest loosening up some color first. So whatever colors you feel like painting that day. So I'm going to blues, right? Um, if you add some bright rose, you get some purple. Mixing that up here. So ultimate blue deep I used. Bright rose, purple colors. And when I have greens done at the same time, so I'll take my cabin yellow deep and Prussian blue. Mix up some greens. So I have those ready to go. You want these kind of things ready to go. I'm using a number 12 Neptune series brush now. So I'm going to play around with just getting this whole area wet. I might need a larger brush. It's just a big old uh, two inch brush. I'm going to get this fairly wet. And the vase over here. You can kind of come down over that color too. And on the vase. So this is going to be wet on wet fun. We're going to have fun. I'm going to take our big brush, or just number 12, and we'll just start to paint some kind of like round color blooms, right? So it can be purple, it can be blue, or they could be more like lilacs or delphiniums, so they could have, you know, go up here like this a bit, come down here. Again, it can make more purple ones, I'm putting in some purple ones can all just be blue. It'd be kind of nice. Or you can have multicolors. But we're working with a wet on wet night now. I even have this cobalt down here. It's a lovely color. Just tapping in color. You can kind of make it a little bit lighter, looser. And a little splattering will help you too. Kind of like, just play with, where is that going to go? Where is the paint going? And kind of work with that, right? It's already kind of creating some blooms. Splatter a little bit. Don't go too crazy. 
either one or all down here and kind of tap along. Push down and tap. I'm creating some fun blooms. A little thicker paint is going to make it darker. You see how this works? Kind of some thicker paint in here. And we can wait till it dries and adds more like paints that uh you know different values now here i'm gonna go down here i'm gonna have some blooms kind of cascading downward just tapping remember we get all that kind of area wet now in between that i'm gonna start to put some greens in so cleaned up my brush and i'm just gonna kind of make some kind of stems and leaves is the darker tone make sure you have like i said this all kind of mixed up earlier i didn't mix up the tone the darker one well enough so i'm doing that now i use prussian blue yellow and some burnt umber mixing some darker tones get the medium kind of green tones chartreuse color and you see how i'm kind of just moving around fast getting in some lovely stems and greens and if it's dried out here, no problem. We can maneuver that in a bit. Again, I'm just using the 12. Push down and make some leaves. Now in here, you just see a lot of blooms. It's kind of looking like hydrangeas. I didn't mean to be hydrangeas, but it could be. You know, I could change that up too. Um, taking the dark color, going in here and putting some stems. And don't be afraid not to put some stems in this area. What I want to do is wet this a little bit, clean off the water. I'm just going to wet this area in the base. See how that looks like it's kind of fading in the glass. And if you don't want to use a 12, it's becoming too big for you to handle. Grab an eight long round velvet touch series brush or whatever stiff long round brush you have. Oops, too much blue here. It happens. Dark green. So I'm putting some stems in here, pokey little stems coming, peeking out through here. The wet on wet's great. It's a lot of fun. If you feel like it's got too much blue in here, we can remove some. We have that technique where we remove it. So kind of twist and take off some paint. So you can go back in later and add some color or whatever. What do you want to do? Blooms it blended too much maybe and starting to look like a hydrangea maybe didn't want a hydrangea i don't know if i necessarily want that either so i'm moving some color tapping back on my paper towel removing color and then you can go back in and you can add greens i use a stiff brush this was a 10 round so i'm gonna go add some greens deeper greens Maybe some brown stems peeking through up this way. Look at that. It's kind of craziness, right? Lots of fun. I'm going to go back with my long round brush. So nice green stems kind of happening here. It's still very wet and damp. And if it isn't, clean up your brush, get some water in there, kind of mush it. Right? So see how I'm kind of moving around this? palette with the different browns and the greens and you notice the stems going to come down crisscross like that maybe I have one that's not like this you can be playing around with adding the green stems in here some will be clustered and some will not be clustered some leaves some that can come out, out over here some thicker paint that comes down a little bit it's just loads of fun now here I just feel like it's blended a lot and I don't have my water line remember we talked about that water line you can kind of play with adding the gray Water line in. 
more blue at that purple color. So that's pretty dark. I'm going to clean up my brush and kind of move it downward like that. I might add a little more, maybe cobalt. Do a little more blue color. With the waters in there. You see how that works? And then we used a little bit of this gray on the edge of the vase. We'll be taking some more of this blue, with, um, ultimate blue with burnt sienna. Kind of starting to shape the vase. I'm using the eight long round. Adding in some deeper value. Now I don't know if I necessarily like that one per se, but I might make it a little thicker. Right here. like how this looks so much right here. I might remove that color. Again, you can lift, tap it out. See how we're playing with that? And in here, you do want to highlight from the glass. So if you overpainted and it's too much, you can just try and remove it again with a stiff brush. See, I'm going to remove that because you want to highlight the glass. Same thing over in here too. And if it's still like another trick is just to scrunch up your paper towel. And you have a little highlight. The glass. Right, go in and use the stems. All the fun stuff. Now I'm still gonna start to play with putting more stems. I'm mixing all the colors here, getting a little more brown, adding a little more stems, a little more leaves. I'm gonna be moving around the paper. A little lemon yellow here. Adding in some leaves. Bright color ones up this way. Taps. And it's kind of leaning way too much over this way. I'm going to go and add more, more color out this way. Greens, whatever I have. Make this a little bit brighter. Kind of happening here. Chartreuse yellow, greens. Just kind of balancing it more, All right? It's a full, I just feel like it's too bulky right here. We'll add some more blues up that way too. Oh. Kind of clean up my palette, it's very messy. Sometimes you have to do that. So I don't like how some of these became very blobby, but we'll go back over it. And if it's too blobby and dark, you can kind of play with, again, you know, lifting, removing. So I'll put the color in there and I'll lift up some of the color. I do this often. This is not a stiff brush to do this one, this Neptune series. I'm going to go up here and add some more water and tap some more color. Just little tippy taps from purple. Just balancing out that one side, just so kind of bloppy. And some more deeper values. I'm just playing with the color here. So a stiffer brush. So just like I said, I feel like it's got also bloppy in here. I want to remove some of the color. I'll kind of scrape a little bit. This is that flat wash brush. Paper towel. Kind of just, I call it kind of like erasing the paint. paint. So you can take the same brush and you can kind of mush all this. You get this kind of atmospheric look. Scrape. Don't do it too much because you'll wreck your paper. 
and then you can kind of tap with the paper towel and see what came out. So it's kind of lightly faded. See, it just took all that bulk of like dark color that just didn't make sense in that area and just making it much lighter. These are things you can play around with. And here, I just feel like it's so bulky. I'm going to go back in and do much lighter, prettier, doing the same thing here, kind of moving the paint. See how that lightened that up? I'll even come down here a little bit. Just changing this up. I just lifted so much of that color. It's bothering me a ton. <laughs> you see? It feels better, doesn't it, already? And you don't know that until you start experimenting, playing with that a little bit, right? I don't mind it so much over here. It was just so heavy over there with those colors, and I want to really just kind of a light tone. I'm going to keep the beige. I'm going to go back in and make some more beige. We'll let that dry a bit tones right it's a little too put some shadowing going on here adding some more depth and there'll be some shadowing here because these are kind of overhanging I'm gonna be playing around with adding color here and tone And you can figure out if your light source is coming from behind it, in front of it, you want it to go this way. So we can have some more depth on this side, little crisscross lines and stuff. And we can make this side much darker. It depends what you want it to do. So I'm going to take these two colors again, ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. And I'm really going to get much deeper and darker, a little bit thicker. Get this shadowing happening on this side. You can even have the base kind of like have a shadow kind of coming like right here, going that way. You see that? And then the light source is coming this way. Maybe a little more blue. Just make it a little more intense. You know, it's blending right now because it's very wet. And it'll be darker over here, but it'll be more intense, like kind of right where I showed you. So I'm just going to darken this side up a little bit. I'm going to wait till that side dries. You can add a little bit of this color kind of here because don't forget, these things will create a shadow too. Let's do a little lines like that. You see where it's going? Some intensity with the stems. Again, I love using this chisel end of the brush. Lots of fun. This kind of looks like it blended too much like a blob because, because it was very wet. So I'm just going to lift a little bit of this and let it dry and then come back to it. While that's all drying, all that good stuff, you can still play with adding a little bit more color. Um, we're going to go and play with the blooms again, right? And again, if this seems even too dark, or maybe you want to put some color, like some greens kind of happening in here. You can do that. I do want to lighten it up down here though. So I am going to scribble some of this out. You see how my mind works? It's kind of erased, right? It's giving this a little bit more intensity over that side. Playing and you don't know sometimes how you're going to like it until you do it. I want this to have more of a light feel to it. And in here. Again, remember, don't do it a million times. Just a few times. See that? Now you have that shadow kind of situation happening and you can have like the shadow even over in the glass on this side. Adding some of that color. So all the intensity of the lightness is kind of coming from this way. 
And now we'll go back in and play with some of the blooms mm -hmm. and call it a day. So I'll go back with my ultimate blue when it's dry, tap it, wait till it's dry, and some of my lovely rose, and we'll create some nice little blooms. So I did decide to scrape out some of this on this side, you know, because I felt like it needed it. Can add a little highlight again. Just using the chisel end of this brush, getting a little bit lighter. These are the things I talk about. You have to play around with what you feel comfortable, how it looks. And I just made it a lot better, I just feel like. And I don't like this hard edge, so I might kind of edge out, make it softer. The blue. just looks better that way. A little more atmospheric, kind of fun, funky. So now we're going to play with the florals. You can grab whatever stiffer brush. You can play with, again, splattering more color or just putting in more color. So I might just take this eight long round and just do these little taps, kind of going up like you would see a delphinium look or even like a lilac. Just kind of in a triangle going upward, putting some blooms up that way. Maybe some more round circular ones. Depends what you feel like doing. This could have been more of like, again, you can see a circular kind of flower happening, right? And adding in a deeper tune in the center. I'm just going to have to start to play around with it and see what you like. Do petals, different petals, pink, purple, blue, whatever. I'm going to go play with adding just like simple petals over here, over here, kind of coming out and touching that. It will change the picture and even coming down here. You can make whatever blooms you want. It can be more of a daisy shape, um, hydrangeas, it could be um, pansies, things like that. Or just simple round type shapes with a dark blue center, right? So here's a round shape and a dark blue center. Now it's just changed, right? And again, I would stress playing with like splattering some paint too. Once dry. See how that looks like right over here? It's kind of pretty. Light lilac kind of balloons now. It's a little too dark. You can tap it on a paper towel. You can paint some like nice dainty blooms that we didn't have before. Again, play with this. Doing the triangle kind of situation here. And I think it'd be really kind of cool grabbing some greens, whatever. Have some kind of stems kind of coming down. Now that it's all like dried and you can kind of put some nice deep colored stems in. I'm mixing up some deep green, brown greens. Go here and add some stems kind of coming this way and that way and down in front darker leaves going around some of the blooms right these will add so much more to your composition by just put some little wispy kind of greens with little leaves even out here Kind of poking through because you don't want them everywhere but you do want some poking through around the florals here and i'll go back and i'll take the blues and the purples and i'll make little ditzy flowers just kind of on the stems of these same thing here even some bigger rounder ones you just play with this again variety is the spice of life. 
going to have different blooms in here, kind of hanging down. Maybe I don't know if I like that one, but I'll just kind of lighten it up. <laughs> and same thing over here. I'll have some kind of sprigs, adding in some little blooms. Maybe they're purple. Oh, my colors are all blending crazily. I had some orange mixed in with the purple. It got a little nuts. Watered this down so it's fairly light. Just putting in little doodah, ditzy flowers, I call them. Just filling it in. Bright rose kind of blooms. Just changing it up a little bit. Put some bright, look at that intensity color, it's so pretty. Just that pink, just add a little something going over the purple here and even down in here. Just change it up by putting that bright pink in there. Now it's a whole different look. And you can reflect that, that color kind of a little bit here on the base, that blue. Why not, right? Some blue here and little greens, like maybe some leaves have fallen. So a little concave like, like that leaf is falling down and you get some color there. And you can put some fallen petals and some pink ones too. Just give it some variety. Yeah. So I hope that was fun. Um, playing around with the different things. If you really enjoyed this, I'm glad. Um, if you'd like to support my channel, maybe consider joining my Patreon where I have more lengthy tutorials, uh, more in depth, and uh, I give you a reference photo and a traceable. And we go like some of the tutorials on there, it can be an hour and you get some real in depth insight on how to paint specific kind of tutorials. So, and it's a place people support my channel here, which I appreciate.